So marketing is about return on investment, and this is how I look at everything that I do. So you guys have invested your time to be here today, so my objective for the next 20 minutes is to share with you the most cutting-edge techniques to take the risk out of marketing for your new innovations. These will also help you to stand out and take market share on your existing services and increase customer retention. I want you to get maximum value out of this talk and event here at Google. My name is Rachel Murray and I'm lead strategist for Fountain. We've spent nine years continuously refining a process that takes the risk out of marketing. So as you're going through digital transformation, it's my job to help market your new, new innovations in a way that reduces risk and maximizes returns. Google have awarded us twice for our methodology. Once last year for the best paid search performance award in Europe, the Middle East and Africa. And it was this year that we beat 1,100 other agencies from 58 different countries for Google's global award for growing businesses online. But enough about us. Today is all about you guys. Having worked with a number of insurers and spoken to your colleagues in the industry, I'm here today to speak about the three most pressing problems that insurers have raised with us. So let's start with number one. Losing money through digital marketing when taking new products and services to market. Imagine if you could reduce wasted media spend through accurate forecasting. I'll be outlining our approach to this this evening. And number two, standing out and taking market share on your existing services. How do you get ahead of the competition and the dreaded comparison sites, sorry if there's any of you here, <laughs> by uh, advanced optimization and Google beaters? Megan from Google will be talking about the latter later tonight. And number three, client retention, how to prevent the risk of brand switching. So the biggest mistake in marketing is focusing on activities, not outcomes. And the most successful marketing campaigns begin with the end in mind. I'm sure you've all experienced your marketing teams coming forward with new exciting ideas, but with little forecasting about what the results are likely to be. I see some nods, yeah. <laughs> This is why, before we work with any new clients, we outline their cost per acquisition. Then, we look at each individual channel and look at the cost per clicks. Once we've got these two numbers, we then look at the conversion rate required in order for the campaigns to be profitable. So, for example, if your cost per acquisition is £100, your cost per click is £1, your conversion rate required, so your website conversion rate, for example, is 1%. Easy, simple as that. But it's absolutely paramount that you establish these three most important numbers before embarking on any new strategy in order to reduce risk. So when your marketing team next comes forward and says they've got a new strategy for a portal or innovation, outline the cost per acquisition, get them to look at the cost per clicks, and then work out the conversion rate required for the campaigns to be profitable. If the numbers aren't working, it's because the cost per acquisition is too low or the cost per clicks are too high. At least this way you can see where the problem is in the funnel. So you've got your three most important numbers. Now it's time to start, st start setting targets. So for example, if you want 1,000 sales per month and your cost per acquisition is £150, this means your monthly budget is £150,000. Easy as that. So now you need to start thinking about where your target audience are. Where are they online? Where are they most likely to respond to your advertising? Is it Facebook, LinkedIn, AdWords? For most of you, I imagine most of you are using AdWords at the moment. But whatever the answer is to this question, the cost per clicks of these channels will determine whether or not they'll be profitable for your business. So let's look at some average cost per clicks. Facebook, five pence to five pounds. LinkedIn, £1.50 to £9, and Google, six pence to a whopping £200. Oof. So which industry do you think has the highest cost per clicks? Anyone? No, 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 no. Well, specific, no win, no fee. <laughs> Liverpool must be a hazardous place because Accident claims Liverpool has a whopping suggested bid of £185.22. 
And uh, so Google Keyword Planner is just one of the tools that we use to forecast cost per clicks for our clients. But that is the highest one that I could find on my research. <laughs> So then we need to look at the conversion rate required, but what's an average conversion rate? So do you know the average website conversion rate? Anybody? 2%. 2%. So the online average is 2%, e-commerce 0.5 to 4%, and probably the most relevant for you guys will be the last ones. That's online quote or information, which is 5 to 35%. So again, three most important numbers. Cost per click is £15, cost per acquisition is 150 then your conversion rate required is 10%, and for most of you guys, that will be fully achievable. We then apply this met methodology to each of the channels in order to work out the funnel and see if they'll be profitable. Marketing is all about selling the next step, so that's why it's important to draw out the steps first in order to reduce risk. So if you go back to this bit, You'll see that we will look at the impressions and clicks, how many of those will be generated. Then, from your click to lead conversion rate, how many leads will be generated. And then from your lead to sale conversion rate, how many sales will be generated and at what cost per sale. So it's drawing out the steps. So this is why we have created the Digital Strategy Builder, in order to reduce risk and draw out each of these steps. And this is something that we use as a tool to forecast all of these steps before we work with any new client. So let me talk you through it. This one's, yep, this one's probably better. So we first of all, we set the goals with the client. So this is target sales, lead to sale conversion rate, target cost per sale, average sales value, and website conversion rate. The strategy builder then automatically calculates our targets for us, including maximum budget, potential revenue, and target return on investment. It'll also show us the number of clicks that are required and the max cost per clicks at varying website conversion rates because we always like to increase the website conversion rates for our clients. That's something I'll touch on later on in the talk. We then go and we look at each individual channel. So this one is specifically for AdWords and this is for a corporate bonds organisation and it's actually one that I did a couple of weeks ago and I thought it would be a good example. So all you need to do is go into Google's Keyword Planner and drop in the number of the keywords, the searches per month, and the cost per clicks. And then the rest of it is all done for you by the strategy builder, which is fantastic. It will show you the number of clicks you should expect to see receive per month, the sales, and the cost per sale, including our management fee. We then repeat this process for each of the different channels in order to see if they'll be profitable for your business. Unfortunately, this means we turn away more people than we take on. We wish we didn't have to, but we do, because if the numbers aren't working, this means that your offering isn't profitable. So to recap, forecast first, establish those three most important numbers before embarking on any new strategy in order to reduce risk. So this brings us on to our second problem, how to stand out and take market share on your existing services. So let's talk about existing, optimising existing campaigns. Where do you start? You've got thousands of keywords, hundreds of ad groups, hundreds of campaigns on AdWords, and limited human time. So say you're paying your current agency 50 to 150 pounds an hour, how are you best to allocate that resource? Optimization is about prioritisation, because I'm as I'm sure you know, not all customers are created equally. And this is why we apply the Pareto principle to all of our campaigns, because you'll normally find that 20% of your keywords are resulting in your highest value customers. But what most people don't do is square the Pareto principle. We found, with a lot of testing and time, that it's actually the 20% of the 20%. I know it's mind-boggling you here with all these percentages. <laughs> But you'll find that it's normally 4% of your keywords are bringing in 64% of your revenue. So it's an even smaller sample than the Pareto principle. So how many of you know, actu actually know, you know which of your keywords are bringing in your highest value clients? It's quite hard to know. But that's why that we work with clients to track the entire process, from click to sale, to repeat that, to repeat to resell, to raving fan. 
and we want more of those raving fans. And there'll be a certain percentage of keywords that are bringing those in every time. And we want to allocate all the optimization time and budget to those specific keywords. We also dial up the click-through rate and conversion rate on those keywords in order to get you more and more of those high-value clients. <coughs> click-through rate is incredibly important, as I'm sure most of you know, in all for a success of a paid search campaign. And the best way to dial that up is through ongoing ad split testing. Now, anyone that's done ad split testing can know this can be a bit of a dull, laborious process. And that is why Google have kindly about to launch ad variations. This is something that's currently in beta. Um, and it will allow us to test creative across multiple ads, campaigns, and ad groups on a mass scale. And this will save a lot of time and manpower, especially after what I'm just about to tell you. 50 is the magic number for ad split tests. Most people give up after about four, but we found 50 ad split tests will result in most of them getting about a 5% click-through rate. But then there'll be one that's at 10%, and that will be your highest earner. That took a lot of split testing for us to, to form that conclusion. <laughs> but if there is anything you take away from tonight, it's invest more in conversion rate optimization. This is probably the least invested strategy, but it will be the most profitable for you. How many times do you think Amazon have completely changed their website? Anybody? Any ideas? Never. Five. No, never. Seven, I guess. Ah. <laughs> no, never. They change it every day. Literally, Amazon's website is completely different every single day. So this was Amazon a couple of days ago. And that was Amazon the day after. They've changed their offers. They've, changed, they've included Christmas store in there. It's constantly evolving to keep up with consumer demand. Because if you have the highest converting website in your industry, then you can buy all of the traffic and compete effectively with your competitors, the comparison websites, whoever you need to. So a little while ago, a home insurance client came to us. It was about eight months ago. And he said, we need more traffic. And I said, well, why do you need more traffic? And he says, well, I need more sales. And I said, ah, it doesn't need to be that way. If he invested in conversion rate optimization, I explained to him, then he could have three times the more sales, four times more, without any additional traffic. So this is our, the conversion rate table that we show a lot of our clients. You can see that he started off with us at about a 10% conversion rate. And you can see, as we gradually increased it over the eight months, you can see how the sales increase and the revenue. So in the end, he actually ended up getting three times the number of sales with no extra traffic. Safe to say, he was pretty happy. So the question you've all been asking, how do we achieve these results? So we follow a four-point methodology at Fountain. So first of all, we look at Google Analytics data. We look at the user behavior. We see where people are going. What are they doing? Are they going through the user journey you want them to? Then we combine this with user recording software. So I could watch these sessions for hours on user recording software. I don't know if you've heard of things like mouse flow, session cam. And it's literally like looking over the shoulder of a user, clicking around your site, and you'll then, from this, you will instantly see any problems that your site currently has and the reason why people aren't converting. So it could be your USPs are too low below the fold, so people are missing them. It could be people aren't interacting with a red button. People seem to hate red buttons. I don't know why, but they do. They love green buttons. Or it could be that you need a quick query form on your site. It could be anything but we'll see it from combining these two sets of data. Then we like to look at longer term hypotheses. So it could be actually we think a whole user journey needs to be completely revamped. But instead of just saying, just go ahead and do it, we like to split test these larger changes by split testing software such as Visual Website Optimizer or Google Optimizely. So tonight I'm actually gonna pick on Aviva. Where are Aviva tonight? Oh, there's a couple of you. <laughs> You're both smirking at each other. What's she going to do? Right, so I'm going to demonstrate Visual Website Optimizer on your home insurance page. So it's just the one I stumbled across because you're local to us in Norwich, and I've got my insurance with you, but sorry, guys. <laughs> so 
So here we go. It's a video of me clicking around on your home insurance page to demonstrate the wonders of VWO. So as you can see, you can change... Oh, there you go. Home insurance from £5. I can change the text on your site. This isn't live. Just, just to note, guys, this isn't live. Don't panic. I can hide things. I can hide elements on the page. I can change button colours. I can add images. I can add star ratings. I can add whatever I wanted and then run a 50-50 split test to see which of the pages had the highest conversion rate. And if it's ours, then we know that that change is worth making. It's really, really easy. I'm about to change your button to a horrible green colour there, don't look. <laughs> but no, it's really good fun and it's absolutely integral to increase to increasing conversion rate ongoing. I've actually had a dig around in the delegate list and had a look at some of the taggings on your websites to see how many of you are actually using split test software. And actually, I wasn't going to do this, but hands up who is using split test software in their companies. Does anybody know? Yeah, a couple of you. Yeah, because when I had a little look around, I only found about three people that were using it. And actually, with our experience, most insurers aren't using split test <coughs> software, and it's absolutely vital to do this in order to increase conversion ongoing. So to recap, find out where your highest value customers are coming from, and then increase conversion rate ongoing in order to maximise returns. So this brings us on to our third and final solution this evening. So client retention, how to prevent the risk of brand switching. Are you the most trusted voice in the industry? How do you make users feel when they think of your brand? What are the emotions that are brought up? I know most of you probably communicate with your clients when the renewal time's up or just sort of once every few months if you've got a new offering for them. But it's really important to offer them something of value from every angle. I'm aware that most of you are probably doing basic remarketing. So this is when someone lands on your site and then you can follow them around with ads around the internet for up to 540 days. But what a lot of insurers don't do is they don't tailor the ads depending on the action that the user took on the website. So, for example, if I went on the renewals page but I failed to renew, then it's important to follow me around with ad an advert for something of value. So, you know, what your latest offers are. What would I find interesting? We can set up remarketing on the following channels, so LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Google, and really, it's important to target them from all angles, if possible, all of the channels, because in today's age, most people do use all of these things. And they also have a much higher conversion rate because they're already familiar with your brand. It's also good to do partner remarketing. This is something we've actually started finding out recently. So if you've got a partner or a sponsor, put your remarketing code on their site and make, make the most of their traffic. So why not? And they could put their, their remarketing code on yours. It's just as good to make the most of people that are going to be familiar with your brand. The customer match. This is probably one of the most important things for client retention, I would say. And it's a strategy that we use for all of our clients. So what you need to do with customer match is you segment your email list depending on what people, what the way you want to target people. So, for example, if people are due for renewal, segment them, etc. Then you upload them to Google, Facebook, uh, and Gmail, and then you can send them tailored ads, and then obviously content on a landing page that's relevant to them. But it's really important to add value rather than selling to them, because then if you add value, this will evoke trust within the user and then you'll become a trusted leader in the industry. The only caveat, I would say, with content marketing is, though, don't spend too much on it. People will spend a lot of money on content marketing, and it's always good to keep in mind what you're willing to pay for client retention. Because everyone thinks content is king, and it's not. Profit is king, and that's definitely something to take away from tonight. <laughs> So to recap, make sure that you get your three most important numbers sorted before embarking on any new strategy. And then secondly, make sure you know where your best performing, best highest value customers are coming from. 
and then continue to increase conversion in order to maximise returns. And last but not least, do a content strategy that offers value in order to stay in front of your customers' minds. So I hope that all of you have got something of value out of my speech this evening. It's been a pleasure talking to you all. Thank you for listening. Um, just before you go and sit down, though, Rachel, just Ooh. a quick question yeah. for you. Um, if you were going to ask people to write down one thing in their notebooks, what would be the little sentence you'd give them to write down? Oh. oh. Invest more in conversion rate optimization. Definitely. That's, if there's one thing you should take away, it should be that. There you go. Right away. Thank you very much. <laughs>